morning and welcome to the morning. rising of the sun to its setting my name is great among nations and in every place incense is offered to my name and a pure offering for my name is great among the nations says the Lord of hosts hear us O Lord for your mercy is great we will exalt you O God our Savior and praise your name forever and ever Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. And the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hands. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The appointed Psalms for today are Psalms 121, 122, and 123. Psalms 121, 122, and 123. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. So that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in, from this time forth forevermore. Psalm 122 I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself. To which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Psalm 123 To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he shows us his mercy. 
Have mercy upon us, O Lord, and have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too, Too much, much of, of the scorn of the, of the indolent rich, rich and, and of, of the, the derision of the proud. proud. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Revelation to John, chapter 2, verses 18 to 29. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works, your love, faith, service, and patient endurance. I know that your last works are greater than the first. But I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet and is teaching and beguiling my servants to practice fornication and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her fornication. Beware, I am throwing her on a bed, and those who commit adultery with her I am throwing into great distress, unless they repent of her doings. And I will strike her children dead, and all the churches will know that I am the one who searches minds and hearts, and I will give to each of you as your works deserve. But to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you another burden. Only hold fast to what you have until I come. To everyone who conquers and continues to do my works to the end, I will give authority over the nations to rule them with an iron rod, as when clay pots are shattered, even as I also received authority from my Father. To the one who conquers, I will also give the morning star. Let anyone who has an heir listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Benedictus. Blessed are you, the Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God written in the Gospel according to John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called, in Hebrew, Bethesda, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, 
and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath, so the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury, your oh, pardon, Lord And where there's doubt, true faith in you Oh, Master, grant that I may never so much to be consoled is to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. In our readings today, I think about the way we treat each other. We have been doing church, playing church, some would say, for a long time. And sadly, if we sit and have a conversation with each other, or conversations about why we left church, or why we don't come to church, and so on, in my opinion, when you hear what persons say, it amounts to toxic church. <laughs> toxic church. And when we look, or if we look honestly at our attitudes and our responses to each other, we would understand why I say the word toxic. I wonder sometimes, how is it so hard to be happy for someone else? In our Caribbean response, we tend to always lean on the negative side rather than celebrate or the celebratory side. Someone does exams, they come home. And it's a laughing, it's a, it's a, it's a laughing cycle here in our, in our communities. You come home and you get nine out of 10 in a spelling test or something like that. And the response is, where is my one? What? Where is the one that did not, that, that you missed? To bring you to 10 out of 10 rather than celebrating the 9 out of 10 and I, I came this way because I was looking at the response of the Pharisees to the guy who was healed 38 years of being lame 38 years of now he is on the the side of the temple by the sheep gate 
where the animals pass, where the animals come to graze or go out of the temple. So, you know, it's not a clean side. It's not a nice side. And he has been lame, unable to move around like regular folk for a long time. And instead of their being amazed and excited for him, now that he is able to walk, Your focus is on the negative side of things. How you end up like that? Who did this to you? Who give them who give you permission to move on the Sabbath? Now mind you, it was okay to heal on the Sabbath in emergency circumstances. And I would say what they deemed to be emergency circumstances was probably life or death. And so because he was lame for how many years? Being lame for a couple more days will not do anything to you in their mind. But for God, it was urgent. And so instead of us celebrating the fact that he has found this new life, that he can move away from his tragedy, disability, and have some sort of normalcy or have some sort of relief from a situation we're dwelling on the negative somebody gets a position we ask how did they get there they're too young for that they don't have the, the requisite skills they don't have and we hold on to the negative rather than celebrate with the individual rather than say how can i support you See why I said we've been doing toxic church for a while? Because in church, this is our response. Remember the Pharisees were the, the ones who knew the law of God, the rules, the scriptures. They studied that. That was their job. They, they, they were well versed in God. And I use quotations. You know, the, the, the quotations, you put things. They were well versed in God's way. And I use that because it's their version of what God wanted or their version of God's way. Rather than seeing the bigger picture, our relationship with each other, our response to each other. What does scripture tell us? Laugh when you are laughing, when others are laughing. Mourn when others are mourning. Cry when others are crying. And so we need to learn to be celebratory with others not pulling people down or dragging people down but lifting each other up i think and some writers would say that the lame man's response because he wasn't even sure exactly what happened he's not sure who even healed him he just knew he just knew he got his instruction and he followed the instruction and he's better off for it. And in the celebration was cut short because here comes these persons in charge to say, how could you, where you get this from? Why are you doing this today? And run down the line of the negativity. And him looking at it or, or looking at some, some thoughts of writers, they would say, he probably acted in fear. And so trying now to go and find this guy who, who did this thing for him so that he could explain, he could he could say to the Pharisees, okay, this was the guy. Making a deal on the side now. So you don't even have a chance to celebrate well that you could move around. You now have to fear for your life. You now have to make a new adjustment so you come out of one pit to go into another and this other pit now is dug by other people and so some school of thought would say that he probably made a deal with the pharisees to go and find the guy who did it or this person that he says it was and bring the information back to them and so this is probably how the pharisees and them started to gather more information about jesus and bring him to crucifixion rather than again Looking at a bigger picture, 
and celebrating with those persons who were healed, those persons who are better, those persons who are able to live life better and help them to see God in the middle of it. Distracted by our own selfishness, self-centeredness, our own desires to be on top of others, our jealousy and envy of others. Only we must prosper. God is only our God. And if something is going wrong with you, well, clearly you don't know God. But I am doing well, and so only I know God. Brothers and sisters, this life is short. There will be ups and downs. I will never forget the golden rule. I probably get licks for it too when I was in primary school. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so if you, in the middle of your prosperity, good happenings in life, want others to celebrate with you and celebrate you, celebrate with and for you, then you also need to do the same for others. It's not just about you. Let us start living a healthy church, a healthy life, not making things about us, but celebrating each other. Not focusing on whether somebody tells you this is happening to them and you say, oh, well, I don't know anything about that. That's not my life or that's not my way. No, just listen to them. Celebrate with them. If you have no good word to offer, then just smile and be quiet. Let's learn to lift each other up. Encourage each other. Support each other. And live better lives here on earth with each other. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace Where there's despair in life let me bring hope Where there is darkness only light And where there's sadness ever To be consoled is to console To be understood is to understand To be loved is to love with all my soul Make me a channel of your peace It is in pardoning that we are pardoned to all men that we receive and in dying that we're born to eternal Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. For the God who said, Out of darkness light shall shine, has caused his light to shine in our hearts, the light which is the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to his close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit, that we may seek in everything to know your will, and knowing it, may gladly perform it, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service, and live this day in love for you and one another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to offer before God your private petitions. And we continue in prayer for the country of St. Vincent, who is still under volcanic watch. Pray that God will dwell among them, that he will still fears, that a sense of readiness and preparedness to move Pray that there will be, from all other countries, a sense of um, readiness to support. Pray for the United States at this time. Pray for all who are looking on. Pray for a rebuilding of morals and values. We pray that persons will learn to allow the dem democratic process to unfold and be and not throw tantrums because they did not get their own way. We pray that we will learn to love each other, accept each other, for our differences. Pray that racism will disappear and that our attitudes to each other will change. We will learn to respect each other regardless of race, regardless of social standing. Pray that we will learn to see each other as human. Pray for God's way to reign in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we continue with the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve our person in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. You have a wonderful weekend. There is injury or pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith is.